Hi, my name is Nate and I'm a member of the Free Flyer Technical Support Team. And I'm here today to talk with you about how to model slew maneuvers in Free Flyer by reviewing the slew maneuver sample mission plan. This mission plan includes a procedure that slews the spacecraft's attitude to look along a specified coordinate system. And this is leveraged in a way that shows an imaging spacecraft looking at different cities in the United States of America. In order to visualize and report the slewing information, this mission plan propagates a spacecraft with an attached sensor in low Earth orbit, determines which city of interest is the closest in range to the spacecraft, then leverages the slew spacecraft procedure to orient the satellite at a reasonable slewing rate towards that city. That city. You can find the slew maneuver sample mission plan on the home screen of FreeFlyer under the demonstration mission plan section. Plan section. In the top view window, we can see a 3D view of the spacecraft propagating and slewing its sensor to cities that are within its elevation and range constraints. In the bottom view window, we can see a 2D map of the spacecraft, its ground track, and its graphics overlay, which shows a history of the spacecraft slewing to new cities. When there is no ground station within the elevation constraint, you can see that the spacecraft slews in the nadir direction and the graphics overlay lines up with the spacecraft's tail history. On the left-hand side of the screen, you can see the console window, which displays the mission plan description and also displays reports of when the spacecraft is slewing to a new city. New city. Now we will take a look at the script to see how this mission plan was built. The first freeform we look at is where we build the compute target attitude procedure. This procedure builds the target CS coordinate system based on the spacecraft, ground station, coordinate system, and variable inputs when the procedure is called later in script. It should be noted, if the target attitude is specified to point towards Earth, the target argument is ignored. First, we create two vector objects, spacecraft to target and velocity vector. We, we then need to synchronize the epics of the vector and coordinate system objects with the source spacecraft's epic so that all of our objects are updated at the same epic during the spacecraft's propagation. Next, we build the velocity vector using the vector.buildVector method, setting the first argument to have a value of 7. Setting the value of the first argument to 7 creates a body velocity vector built from the source spacecraft object. Then, based on the input variable to Earth, we create the spacecraft to target vector, setting the first argument to be equal to 9. Setting the value of the first argument to 9 creates a body-to-body -body vector. If the input value for the variable to Earth is set to 1, we create a vector from the source spacecraft to the Earth. Otherwise, we create a vector from the source spacecraft to the input target ground station. Finally, we build the target CS coordinate system using two specified vectors and variables which specify the vector axis we want to build our custom coordinate system around. The first argument specifies which axis of the coordinate system, x, y, or z, will be defined by our first vector. Vector 1 will always be collinear with the axis specified by the vector 1 axis property. The next axis is computed using the cross product of the two vectors. A third vector is computed using the cross product of the first two axes, and vector two axis property specifies which axis of the new coordinate system, x, y, or z, will be defined by this new vector. If vector one, if vector one and vector two are orthogonal, vector two will be collinear with the axis specified by the vector two axis property. In this case, the x axis of the new coordinate system is defined by the velocity vector. The y-axis is defined by the cross product of the spacecraft to target vector and the velocity vector, and the z-axis is defined as the spacecraft to target vector. vector. In the next freeform, we define the slew spacecraft procedure. This procedure slews the spacecraft's orientation toward the target CS coordinate system, which is constrained by the input value for the slew rate. First, we create the objects used in the procedure which are the two variables slew angle and available angle, two arrays, slew axis, and delta quaternion, and the three coordinate systems, previous coordinate system, delta coordinate system, and new coordinate system. Similar to the first procedure we defined, the first thing we do is synchronize the epics of the coordinate system objects with the spacecraft's epic. We then create a conditional loop based on the perform slew input variable, 
If the perform slew input variable is false, then the spacecraft will jump immediately to the target coordinate system. If the perform slew input variable is set to true, we then build the previous coordinate system by retrieving the orientation of the spacecraft. Next, we compute the differences between the previous coordinate system and the target coordinate systems. Here we set the attitude matrix of the delta coordinate system using the coordinate system dot set attitude matrix method, which initializes the coordinate system object using the orientation derived from the direct cosine matrix. Note, note, the target coordinate system is equal to the delta coordinate system times the previous coordinate system, and the delta coordinate system is calculated as the target coordinate system times the inverse of the previous coordinate system. Next, we compute the change in quaternion in order to get the values of the slew angle and slew axis variables using the coordinate system dot get quaternion method, which retrieves the quaternion that reflects the attitude matrix held in the coordinate system object. Once we have calculated the delta quaternion array, we can then calculate the slew angle and slew axis values. The slew angle is calculated as two times the inverse cosine of the fourth element of the delta quaternion array. As a reminder, FreeFlyer is zero indexed, so the fourth element of the delta quaternion array is represented by the three inside of the square brackets. The slew axis array is calculated as the normalized values of the first three elements of the delta quaternion array using the dot normalized method, which computes an array where each element is divided by the array norm. Next, we compute the largest possible angle, known as the available angle, that the spacecraft can slew in one time step based on the input slew rate in the spacecraft's step size. Then, using a conditional loop, if the total slew angle is larger than the available angle, we scale the delta quaternion down while keeping the axis of rotation the same. We then initialize the delta CS coordinate system using the orientation specified by the quaternion. Finally, we compute the new body coordinate system and apply the coordinate system update to the spacecraft. The new body coordinate system is the product of the delta CS attitude matrix and the previous CS attitude matrix using the set attitude matrix method. Now that we have defined our procedures to be used in the mission plan, we will take a look at the freeform where we create our objects. First, we create three constant variables, perform slew, slew rate, an elevation threshold. The perform slew variable is a boolean determining if slewing is performed at all in the mission plan. The slew rate variable is the rate for slewing in degrees per second if slewing is enabled with the perform slew constant. And the elevation threshold variable is the threshold degrees elevation from the closest ground station that a test must exceed to point to the station. We then create arrays for the sensor footprint and list of ground stations. We then assign the ground stations to the structs for later sorting and give each ground station a display name which will be used in the view windows. Next we create a target and cached ground station to be used later in a conditional loop so that our spacecraft is slewing to the proper stations during propagation. Finally, we call the two procedures we defined earlier to set our spacecraft to point towards Earth to start the simulation. Now we'll take a look at the propagation loop. We first initialize a while loop to propagate the spacecraft for 15 minutes. We then set the default target elevation variable to be equal to zero in the case there isn't a valid elevation value. We also set the point to earth variable to be equal to one per each iteration. Next, we determine the target attitude by first checking a conditional loop to see if our spacecraft is in sunlight. If our spacecraft is in sunlight and within view of a ground station, we want to point to the closest one. We do this by iterating through our list of ground stations and saving the ranges and elevations between the spacecraft and each ground station into their respective ranges and elevation arrays. We then sort, we then sort the stations list and elevations array by range, from closest to farthest using the sort ascending method. We only want to consider times when the elevation is greater than the elevation threshold value of 45 degrees. So using a conditional if loop, we check for elevations greater than the threshold and set the target to the closest ground station, element zero, after sorting. 
Once analysis has been performed on the target station, we update the target station to be the cached station so that we don't repeat analysis on the same ground station twice. This will allow us to move to the next ground station and is reported to the console in the conditional loop above. In the conditional loop above, if the target station display name property does not equal the cached station property, the station has swapped, so we need to report that we are slewing to a new ground station. At each step of the spacecraft, these conditional loops are checked to ensure that we are always slewing to new ground stations to perform analysis on all available stations. Next, Next we compute the target CS coordinate system based on the target station. We do this by calling the Compute Target Attitude Procedure using the ImageSat spacecraft, target station ground station, target CS coordinate system, and point to Earth variable as arguments. We then slew the ImageSat spacecraft toward the target CS coordinate system, constrained by the available slew rate, by calling the slew spacecraft procedure using the target CS coordinate system, perform slew constant variable, slew rate constant variable, and ImageSat spacecraft as arguments. Finally, we update the view windows and step the spacecraft. spacecraft. This concludes our review of the SLU Maneuver Sample Mission Plan, which demonstrates how to SLU a spacecraft in FreeFlyer. If you found this to be useful, you can check out the rest of our how-to videos on our AI Solutions YouTube page. If you have any additional questions or issues, feel free to reach out to our technical support team. You can do this by contacting us through email at techsupport at AISolutions.com or by calling us at 301-306-1756, extension 2. Thanks for watching.